Toka Talks with Toka, <laughs> episode one. Today I have Kyle here who is like my right hand man in all this at times. He is one behind the camera. He likes to be goofy like this, but he also has a serious and a uh, genuine side to him as well. That's why I invited him on to episode one. So Kyle, you want to introduce yourself to the people at home who don't know you? Everyone knows me, but I'll introduce myself. My name's Kyle, I'm behind the camera most of the time in his most successful videos, view it twice. Um, I'm a track athlete at Keller High School. I work at Bear Creek Running Co. with Jonathan. So yeah, that's about it. That's me. In case y'all are wondering, the last time I asked him a very serious question to pretty much like open up in dialogue, he gave me this answer. How was school? It was good. Got off at one o'clock, had some Brahms, watched some um, Netflix, and then now I'm here. Huh. You said how was school. I said how was my day. Uh all right, we just watched that clip, but Brenda, Miss Miss Hall of Fame. Shout out to the Berkeley. Hall of Famer. We love Hall of you, Famer, yeah. national champion. She asked Jonathan, what's your plans after six o'clock? And this man said, I woke up at five. I went to the gym. He went through his entire day. The exact same thing I did. So you can't be a little hypocrite and judge me for that one. He did the same thing off camera. Betsy, or not Betsy. <laughs> Brenda can confirm. Sorry, got the mix up. I don't know where we were going with that conversation, but okay. I so, just remembered that. Kyle, let's let's just talk a little bit about the athletic side for a second. You obviously like to run because you are running for your high school team. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what it takes to be a mentally strong runner, but also just an athlete, a student athlete in general. Uh, it takes a lot of focus and drive. You got to set goals so you can work towards them. Um, definitely a lot of time management too. You have to be consistent to be good at anything you do. So you just gotta work hard, push through all the goals you have, focus on one step at a time, get better every day, and work with my teammates and fellow students in the classroom to get better at everything I try to do. What do you personally do that helps you stay mentally tough though in all that? Because obviously those are all incredible answers um, for anybody who's watching this. Uh, what would you what would you give your younger self advice-wise on how to become even stronger or even just tougher in general in running? Um, plan out your growth. Like, set check marks. So, like, in school, I obviously write down all my homework I have to do each day. And then running, I check my weekly schedule. And um, I, have to just, I like to hit a mileage goal every week. And then each speed workout, I try to measure my growth and see how fast I can go each time. So just do a lot of measuring so you can see your growth or see your decline in some cases. Either way, just find a positive in it and keep on growing. Now you're a senior this year, so obviously you'll go to college next year. Um, the season's not over yet, but what is your goal or goals um, in finishing the season since there's a little bit of time left? Um, yeah, I have like three meets left and then district and at this point, like, I mean, I've kind of hit a plateau since I broke my leg last season. So at this point, I'm just trying to get a few more PRs and mostly lift up the people below me. Um, my underclassmen, I want them to lead next year and improve. And our team is losing a lot of seniors, so I just want to leave with them growing and leaving good impact. Do you feel like going through a serious injury like that has changed you? Um in a positive way more than a negative way because obviously um, we both at work work with a lot of athletes and people in general who suffered major injuries from the knees to the hips to the back yeah. um, and they have given us stories about you know redemption and being really resilient do you feel like in in your career having suffered that as an upperclassman um, do you feel like it helped you like shape you into the uh, the athlete and the man that you are today or do you feel like it's just uh, left kind of like a uh, kind of like uh, like hungry for more like I want to redeem myself in the future in some way somehow um, yes. kind of tell us a little bit about that um, it definitely changed me for the better um, I've always as soon as I got injured I never knew if I'd make it back to getting even close to my PRs you know I was devastated to get injured at district and not be able to compete at regionals and then um, yeah just been the drive to work harder and definitely recover harder since I've been stretching and icing a lot more since 
yeah, definitely hungry for more. Try to redeem myself and finish str as strong as I can. It was definitely devastating to finish my cross country career like that. So it's definitely been used for motivation for track season and other things in life. Now, how how do you stay positive in your personal life that helps you basically bounce back or pick yourself back up, uh, whether it's in school or athletics or just in life in general? What do you personally do to prepare yourself for those failures that are obviously uh, guaranteed in life? Um, I just be grateful for what I have, for what I can do. You know, when I was injured, I was jealous that I could run every single day. So just when I fail, I'm just grateful that I can run. Some people don't ever have the opportunity to run, so I just try to be grateful for what I have and be positive over that. Um, yeah. So for anybody listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, um, what advice would you give them if they're very, very early in their career? or on the opposite end of it, if they're at the later stages of it as a senior, whether in high school or college, uh, what advice would you give to them if you were speaking to them one-on-one -on -one as far as from uh, the running, running side of it? Like, what would you, what would you tell them kind of like, what, what, what life advice would you give them as they're preparing to either start their career or end it if they decide not to pursue running anymore? Um, know that you're gonna run into obstacles and that you have to get over no them. No pun to intended, right? Oh, man, yeah, <laughs> no pun intended. You're gonna run into obstacles. It's the way that you get over them. It's what makes you better every day. Um, nobody's perfect. You're gonna have bad days. You're gonna have bad workouts. You just have to find the positive, find ways to grow, and then just keep on going. On the brighter side of things, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Kyle's uh, dating life for a second because Everybody is wanting, is wanting to know, who hasn't said it out loud, Mr. Rizzler himself is here. So we need to ask you, Kyle, in depth, in the flesh, what is your current dating status? Um, it's very quiet, not going to lie. You know, just kind of riding the wave from senior year. I'm not really trying to find anything. Um, yeah, problems coming up, but I don't know. I don't have any. No risk at the moment. I'm just kind of focusing on finishing track in school and then I'll pick it up back in college. So, picking it back up though, like, how do you personally <laughs> raise up the ladies? We would like to know what kind of examples uh, you can give us as far as using your riz or lack thereof. What what do you like to do? Or what is kind of your plan of action? My, my approach? Your approach, yes. Slow and gradual. You gotta friends and then you pick it up, start hanging out, and then you can start using your riz. You don't want to go straight into it, that's weird. So you just got to be friends first. Just create a comfort zone, and then you can expand, expand from that. So for everybody and their mom who, like me, and like a couple years ago, didn't know what Riz meant, please tell the people at home who are probably over the age of, I don't know, maybe 25, yeah. who may not know what Riz means, please share with us what Riz means. All right. So the word charisma, just take the middle letters out of that. It's like a short acronym for charisma so riz so charisma riz and just like the ability to pick up girls <laughs> that's the definition but charisma is spelled differently than riz right i, I understand that but it's like it wouldn't make sense you spell it r-i-s like you don't pronounce it like that in charisma it's charisma not riz you know like, it's a change of spelling it just r-i-s wouldn't be it just wouldn't flow that's fair that's fair okay <laughs> so I didn't make the word. It just, it TikTok brought it on me. I don't know the roots of the word. It wasn't okay. my invention. All right, so you eventually want to use your Riz, quote unquote. Yeah. Okay. Um, what? Where do you see yourself in five years? Like, what is kind of your plan of action going into college and then moving further in life? Like, what kind of goals have you set for yourself? What plan? you kind of like thought about you know obviously yeah. you have everything figured out right now because mm -hmm, you're only definitely. 18 but yeah. what's kind of your plan moving forward the next five years is this related to riz or is this is that a segue it's related to or whatever you okay. want life me, okay good um so i'm gonna go to oklahoma state fall study business and then get a good degree i want to study abroad during that time then physically i want to continue to run run some half or half marathon or two or three 
definitely lift a lot more. I've always been the scrawny kid. I get stronger for the ladies and for myself. Then, yeah, just want to continue growing every day, physically, and get a better education, set myself up for a job and a successful life over the next five years. Well said. Well said, my man. So, in concluding this episode, what advice, what words of wisdom, what just speak your mind for a second or two and just tell the person watching through the camera or the computer screen, wherever they are, what advice or words of wisdom would you give to them? And it could be whatever is on your heart. Yeah. It's the, the floor is yours for a second. <sighs> Always find a way to be positive. Everyone's going through something. You don't know what other people's in, what other people are going through. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is why oh. Kyle has no riz. Oh Lord, I'm not a YouTuber, man. That's okay. Just <laughs> all right. Make sure we'll have a little cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're keeping cut. that. We are keeping that, man. All right, um, people know. Back to what I'll say. Know. That's a two hundred dollar microphone, man. Two hundred. Two fifty. Now it's like one fifty. <laughs> Oh, now he's got jokes. I okay. didn't mean to get right. dirt in it. Okay. Anyways, find a way to always be positive and shine a light on others. Everyone's going through something, even whether you know it or not. So try not to leave a negative impact on them in whatever you do. And then stay positive for yourself as well. Since a um, confident mind is the way you achieve things. If you're negative all the time, you're not going to be accomplishing your goals or satisfied with what you're doing. So stay positive. Be positive to others and be understanding what other people might be going through. Well said. Well, guys, uh, that is episode one in Toka Talks with Toka. This is Kyle Cox. His Instagram handle will be below his face. Just like you know, if you've watched the channel for a long time, um, please subscribe to my channel as well as to the podcast so you can stay up to date with all future episodes and videos. And until next time, we'll see you guys on the other side. Peace. That was pretty good, I think. <laughs>